roll to the couch. My wait, the labor's up. But you ain't gonna break you out. In the end, we're gonna make the chat. Where's the camera? I got him on the internet. Okay, we are talking about the Fujifilm X106, or VI, whichever one you want to call it. I got it from Lens Rentals. You can stop the video now if you really want to just skip all of this. Pretty much I rented it for about seven days. That's the only way I could actually physically get my hands on the camera because there's no other way because I didn't pre-order it very on time. Uh, I did not do the pre-order on February the 20th or the 19th like everybody else. And I'm pretty sure everyone else is getting their orders now. I believe I ordered mine on March the 11th or 12th. So I should be able to get it by 2027. Maybe realistically by the end of the year or at the beginning of next year. Hopefully before the seventh version comes out. I will have like random pictures that I took. Uh, we actually went on the Creeper Trail. Got some very good pictures of the actual trail, my wife. I also tested this out on our niece. So the Creeper Trail is a trail in Abington, Virginia, in Southwest Virginia, where it's about 30-ish miles long. It's got a pretty good amount of just scenery. I seen cows, we had bike stations, we had an old church signs, anything you can imagine. On a bicycle trail, it's actually very good to test out this camera. Uh, most of the time I did use Porta, 800 also used a recipe called Pacific Blue along with some Kodak recipes. The only real reason that I even made this video was to kind of help you all out. The only way I got the actual camera without, you know, doing, getting a time machine or giving, you know, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 on eBay was to actually rent it on Lens Rentals. I do have a referral code that you can use down in the link below. It'll give you $25 off. It'll also give me $25. So you get $25, I get $25. On Lens Rentals currently on April the 22nd, 2024, the closest time you can actually get the rental now is May the 31st for the silver one. And it was like June the 20th on the black one. So good luck, get in there, get it done, get $25 off, give me $25, it helps everybody out. Plus the good thing about this is I've never actually owned a Fuji camera at all. This kind of helps me out because I really wanted to hate this camera. I was like, no way I'm gonna like this camera. There's no reason to, I'm a videographer. I don't even shoot photos. I'm not even good at that, but I've actually gotten pretty good at it. I do like the feel of the camera. I thought it was kind of heavier uh, than my actually ZV-E1 here, but it was that feel of it. And then when I took some pictures of it, I kind of fell in love with it. I really wanted to hate it. I had the Ricoh GR3, uh, which is an even smaller camera that I could put in my pocket. And I hated that camera. And maybe that's just user error on my end, but. I did not think that it shot very good pictures right out of camera. You would have to edit it. Granted, it has a lot of recipes on it as well, but did not like that camera. So I wanted to hate this. I wanted to cancel my pre-order. I wanted it to go away. I never want to think about it again, but fell in love with the Fuji colors, fell in love with the overall system, the feel, the nostalgia of like the 80s, 90s, reminded me that I need to go play my Nintendo probably or something like that. The other ways to get the camera besides the big shops is you got, you got Best Buy, you got B&H, you got Adorama, and you got little tinier local shops. That's probably the best way to get it, but they really probably won't even have the cameras for months, years. Fuji's not really been very upfront on telling us when. They say that they're making, I think, 15,000 cameras a month uh, at the newly formed factory in China, and there's been, what, millions of pre-orders, probably millions of orders after the fact. Hopefully a bunch of people will cancel it. The only other ways that I've come across on the internet is Best Buy. Uh, I guess you have to go onto their chat, talk to a representative, see if they actually have any returns or 
anything in stock. Granted, I went on Best Buy the other day harassing some guy probably named like Steve or something. And I said, hey, do you have any cameras? You know, the Fuji X100 6. And he basically said, nope, sure don't. But some people have had success, but I just checked the website uh, recently and they actually have a before paragraph before you even enter the chat about cameras is this is what it says. It literally says agents are unavailable to provide inventory updates for Fuji film cameras. If you have a product availability question, our site has the most current information. Basically, that's a big middle finger to everybody who's been using the Best Buy chat. Every once in a while, you'll get some luck from Best Buy. I believe they ask you for your zip code. See if there's one locally, but that's not been working for me. Other option is Fuji film in the United States has actually 300, I believe, limited edition cameras. They sold a hundred of them already. They said two thirds of them, so about 200 of them were actually bots and they were like, oh, we're not gonna sell it to them, so we're gonna do a raffle. This is free. It's already passed. This does not help you out whatsoever if you have not entered into this raffle. Basically, you have to enter in your email, your address. You can only have like one physical address and there's 200 cameras and it costs $2,000 instead of $1,599 because it's the limited edition. With the limited edition, they only made 1,934 units. It is going to be engraved on the camera. It also comes with the engraved lens cap and an engraved Fuji logo that's different, along with a special strap that looks like a piece of rope, a soft release button, a shutter button made of titanium, a history card, more history cards, and a special box. And this will only cost you two thousand dollars oh hell no no good luck finding one on ebay i'll look and see how much they cost so the regular edition on ebay currently going about 2300 2400 i honestly expected to be even more than that pretty much asking around 800 900 close to a thousand over msrp the limited edition is around 3,500. I mean, that's the cheapest one I'm finding right now. Oh, some guys got it for 2,750 from Chile. Hopefully I said that right. So technically you can still get the camera. It's just gonna cost you probably $1,000 over asking price or $2,000 over asking price. Hell, the last version, the version five, still selling for about $1,000 on eBay, if you can find it. I found one with 38 clicks on here for $1,000, that's a good ass deal. We should probably get it, honestly. And the last option is for you to order on the big websites like B&H, which I use the most because I have their credit card. I don't have to pay sales tax. Sales tax in Tennessee is 9.25, which is stupid. So I got the credit card, it helps me out. It came out to $1,599, it'll ship in what, 2027. So you can either wait, be patient, or you could rent it, use my code, Helps me out, helps you out. Plus you get to try it, you might hate it, and then you'll sell it to me, that'd be great. I wanted the silver one because it looks more retro. I'm a retro man now. I'll have a bunch of pictures, like I said, going over top, showing you all the different recipes. I think one thing I do like over my Sony cameras or my cameras in general is that I can just bake in almost that filter or recipe, sorry, people get mad at you when you explain color science like filters, but they're fucking filters that you put over the image and it just looks cool. It looks more retro, it's got more grain on it. It doesn't feel as sharp, it's just got better just feeling to it straight out of camera. You can always shoot raw, you can change all the images that you want, put in any filter or recipe that you want or presets in Lightroom, which I do like too. But there's just something special about just having it straight out of camera, shooting it, putting it on whatever you want, printing it off. 40 megapixels helps you out quite a bit. My ZV-E1 does not do very well uh, with cropping in. I did actually rent, at the same time as the Suji camera, I rented the A6700 APS-C camera, great camera, probably second choice. I rented the A7C Mark II, 33 megapixel full frame camera, also a good choice. And I also rented the A7CR, which is like 60 plus megapixels and those files are massive. All those cameras take great images, great video, but 
they did not help me out with the feeling that I got and the baked in JPEGs. I did find a way around this a little bit because Sony and Fuji's color science are a little different. So there is a guy, uh, I'll have a link on my description somewhere or a card. He basically charges you some money for either presets or baked in recipes. You can actually change your picture profile on your Sony cameras and have that kind of Fuji film, Kodak, Porta, whatever film simulation that you want on there, kind of just baked into the camera. There's a lot more adjusting. There's a, you can't, when you switch from photo mode to video mode, it's still baked in there. So it's kind of annoying in that case, but it does kind of give you that little bit of film simulation of Sony camera. It kind of helps him out. Uh, it's actually good that someone's actually trying to do this. I guess you can mess around with it all day long. I didn't want to do that but it, most of them work very, very well. It's not the same, uh, I will be honest with you. I'm better off taking the pictures, importing them in the Lightroom, just changing for every single preset that I want or adjust whatever I need to. But that is an option that I did find. As a videographer, vlogger, YouTube wannabe, douchebag. Damn! Whatever you wanna call me. Honestly, you don't need this camera. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, I really wanted to hate this camera. I really just needed a camera that tech took, I guess, better pictures and then I could crop in. Uh, my iPhone does really, really, really good. Uh, but when you try to crop in, it's supposed to be 12 megapixel, but a lot of them, it's supposed to be 48 megapixels on sun cameras, but it's really 12 or even less than that. Plus the sensor so small. Uh, whenever you crop in or there's a low light, it's just horrendous. The Fuji has a 40 megapixel, so I was able to, you know, take a bigger picture and crop it in, and it's just a lot better. I forgot to go over the video capabilities of this camera, which I didn't use very much. It does have in-body stabilization, but if you're coming from the ZV-E1 or the Pocket 3, the stabilization shitty is, it's just shitty. I'm just gonna tell you that in comparison to that. If you're just shooting some B-roll and everything else like that, it works. You can't hold it, it's too close. The focal length's too narrow. You're, you can zoom into your nose, so you can have like a nose vlog if you want. It does have F-log. I've never really played around with it, uh, but the film simulations actually work in video mode, so that's actually kind of cool. But I really won't be able to test that out because I literally just had photo mode going on it. Didn't really have too many videos. So pros. Color science, film simulations. There's a million recipes. You can look it up on a Fuji Weekly app and they're all added on there. 40 megapixel sensor, can crop in. ND filter, which I didn't use. That's more for video. And the feel of nostalgia. The way it makes you feel kind of like whenever you had a disposable camera back in the day and you used to turn that knob and you're like, man, I hope I took a good picture and had that flash. And this has a flash. You get that old school feeling. You turn into Walmart. Two weeks later, you get the shittiest photos ever or you keep a memory for the rest of your life. Those are the pros. The cons, it'll take forever for you to get. You're never gonna get your hands on it unless you rent it or you get it on eBay. It's a little heavier than I expected it to be. It's actually heavier than my ZV-E1, uh, not with the lens on, uh, but it, it was actually heavier. The Ricoh GR3 you can put in your pocket. It's a lot more pocketable. If you need to put this in your pocket, your pockets are gonna have to be like, you know, this big, like, you know, plus size and just stuff it down in your pants. Only negatives I got for that. Oh, wait, there's one more negative. Is a fixed lens and some people don't like fixed lenses but it forces your hand now the alternatives i also came up with that you can rent on lens rental is the smaller body which is the xt32 uh, i would wait for the xt50 which is going to come out in a few months i believe uh, the xt5 which actually has the same sensor but bigger and i believe there's some older models but though oh and the x hs20 uh, which is kind of the rival to the Sony a6700. They all kind of have that same feel, film simulations. They all have pros and cons. I'm sure there's better videos that you can watch. So that's my thoughts. Moral of the story is if you want the Fujifilm X106, 
you'll either need to wait forever like I am through the big dealers to go to a local shop, wait maybe slightly longer or slightly shorter. Three, buy it on eBay for $800, $900, $2,000 over retail. Four, you could guess you could like steal one from somebody who you know has one, but that's probably not a good option and that's highly frowned upon. Or five, which is the best option uh, for short term use so you can figure it out is to rent it on Lens Rentals. I think that's the only one that's renting it out right now because lens rentals and borrow lenses combined and they still have stock so first come first serve get there get it done like comment subscribe if you don't that's fine too if you don't want to use my code that's fine as well but hopefully this helps you out